Okay, let's get to the First Lady's man. He's standing by and ready for us. Andy Oak joins us again. The First Lady's man. Firstladiesman.org. You can find, no, dot com. Andy, correct me. What is it? Dot com. Firstladiesman.com. Okay. Firstladiesman.com. Is it L A D Y S or I E S? L A D I E S. All of them, from Martha to Melania. Okay. We got into a big discussion about that behind your back one day as to whether or not ladies shouldn't be a possessive and a Y apostrophe S <laughs> as opposed to a plural. Because indeed it because, is. Because, Jack, it's, it's the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Andy, let's talk first ladies again. I liked your from Martha to Melania. That has some nice alliteration to it. Um, but- yeah, before. And today, you want to talk about a historic first lady that has some similarities to Melania in the sense that they don't really like the White House. (laughs) Or that's that's the impression we get from Melania, I should say. Sure. I don't don't think it would surprise anyone to hear me say that, that, you know, first lady was was not Melania's first pick for for jobs at this point in her life uh, and, and stuff to do next on her bucket list, I'm sure. But uh, as her poll number rises, and we see her out there doing the things that she does enjoy doing in the position, um, the, the more we like her. You know, we, we want to like these women. They, they always pull higher than their husband. But as, as you mentioned, not all of them wanted to be there. And that's why I wanted to bring up Margaret Taylor from back in Volume 1 and in the 1800s. She's not alone in a number of first ladies that were not in good health. Uh, by the time they got to Washington. And some first ladies, Margaret Taylor is one of them, you know, when they were first uh, uh, approached by the press, they looked and they said, I'm, I'm an invalid. Uh, you don't want to talk to me and I don't want to talk to you. And they went in the White House and they went upstairs and they checked into their back room and, and let their daughters and, and other people handle a lot of those hostessing duties. Margaret Taylor, she didn't want to be in the White House so badly that when the... Uh, a, a, now I don't know what party uh, uh, Taylor was. Whenever the whatever party he was, Republican or Democrat, when when those higher ups approached him to to run, that's what the parties would do back in the day. They would find their likeliest candidates or the man that they wanted for the job, and they would go and petition him and say, "Hey, we want you to run." But Margaret Taylor told the higher ups, she said, "Leave us alone. We've served our country." He was a retired general. He was an old man. They they they'd uh, they'd retired down south by this time, and she didn't want any part of it. So she went into the White House, and it got to be that, that when they, they didn't know that she was there, the, the, the public didn't know they all thought the president was a widower, so much so that they didn't even save Margaret Taylor a seat at her husband's funeral. She showed up at the funeral, and people wanted to know who she was. She said, well, President Taylor's my husband. They said, oh, well, we thought you were dead long ago. And then they had to pull her in an extra chair at her own husband's funeral. How about that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so how they must have had a substantial amount of children then to take on those duties? Well, they did, you know, and, and life was short back then. We didn't have penicillin. People died from being dehydrated. And that's why people had so many children, because the life expectancy was, was not long. And, and there was more legacy involved back then, I think, that, People would keep having children until they had that male, that that son, that they could pass the family name along to and the family fortune and property and stuff. So, you know, people are uh, people are are unsettled by the fact that Ivanka Trump does so many things in her father's administration. And it is unusual in modern times for this to happen, but not unprecedented in the least. by the third administration of our country, by the Jefferson administration, there was no first lady because Jefferson's wife had died 20 years before he got into the White House. And this well, goes on and on. The, the most recent president to not have a wife do first lady's duty was with Wilson in between his first and second wives. Ellen Wilson died shortly after he went into the White House from Bright's disease, a kidney disease. And before he married... Um, Edith Wilson, his, his second wife, he, he had his oldest daughter, Margaret Wilson, stand in and do the, uh, the, the hostessing duties. Back to Margaret Taylor, it must have been hard to research her if she was so reclusive, but did you find out anything about her beyond the fact that she 
didn't want that role or couldn't had that role because of her invalid. For instance, was she a woman living in pain? Well, no. This, most of the well, yes, yes, a, a bit in pain. A, a majority of of the women that, that did not serve uh, in their fullest capacities had either consumption with tuberculosis, which was annoying cough and and hacking and a, and a, and a, and a lung sort of. Uh, phlegmy d- disease. I don't want to get too graphic, but but it was uncomfortable, especially the coughing. Um, or epilepsy, before we even knew what epilepsy was. Uh, First Lady um, uh, Elizabeth Monroe actually had a seizure in the White House and fell and got severely burned in one of the fireplaces. She had a seizure and fell into the fireplace. Um, so so these, were, these were serious afflictions and, and complications that these women had. But uh, I did find this out about Margaret Taylor, which I thought was unusual and, and close to home for me. She was raised on a small farm in southern Maryland, and her father would have had dealings with a lot of the same people that were related to Louisa Catherine Adams, uh, John Quincy Adams' uh, uh, wife, uh, through, through her father who had ties to Maryland. So, you know, this was kind of like a first lady that was right in my own backyard uh, before uh, before long before she was a first lady, that I just I just didn't know too terribly much about. And volume two, lady, moving on, There's it features the youngest first lady of the United States so far. It, it is. It's, and this is, I, I, I kind of, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to do this. This is actually a, a volume one lady as well. I'm kind of oh, breaking okay. the mold a little bit as we lean in. But, but this, this fits perfectly with Margaret Taylor in that for, all, for the, the small handful of women that, that didn't want to be in the White House, there were some that wanted nothing more than to be in the White House. And Frances Cleveland is one of those. Frances Cleveland, you're right, is our youngest first lady at 21 years old when she married sitting President Grover Cleveland, who was 49 at the time. If you can imagine the scandal, if uh, well, first of all, I don't think in modern times, uh, not, not anytime soon, a, a bachelor or unmarried president would be elected. You know, we want that we want that nuclear family. We want to see our ourselves represented in the White House. But Grover Cleveland was the second bachelor president to be elected. And when he turned forty nine, he married Frances Folsom in the White House, the only first lady and president to get married in the White House. Their ceremony was held in the Blue Room and um, and she was actually Grover Cleveland's former law partner's daughter. <laughs> so if you can imagine anything even close to this happening in modern times, the scandal that would go on. But when Frances Cleveland, she has a lot of un- unusual first lady first and first lady only, really, she's the only first lady to serve two unconsecutive terms. Her husband had a four-year term where he was elected president, and then Benjamin Harrison won an election. And on her way out of the White House, Frances Cleveland said to the White House staff, take care of the place and our things. We'll be back in four years. Uh. And she was. Grover Cleveland got elected, and largely in part because of Frances. Frances Cleveland was, was Jacqueline Kennedy before Jacqueline Kennedy. She was young. She was attractive, super stylish, fashion, fashionista. Women styled their hair and their clothes after her, and they had young children in the White House. And this is sort of a triple threat, you know. If if you're young, attractive, and have children in the White House, then then the American public really, really embraces you. Wow. Okay, I'm just looking her up now because if I if you would have said Francis Cleveland to me, I can't picture anyone in my head. But I just looked her and, up. And an interesting part of this this whole C-SPAN series and 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 my my subsequent you know further research and travels and things. I get to meet a lot of very interesting people and a lot of relatives, and I got to, to meet via phone. It was just a phone call that I did, but she lives in Baltimore now. Ann Roberts, who is Frances oh. Cleveland's granddaughter. And oh, wow. to hear the stories of a woman telling me going to Granny's house and getting in trouble for skipping choir practice and getting caught, you know, running out with her friends bowling and 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 just all other kinds of really really personal stories from the people that knew these women it, it's just it's just absolutely amazing to have that kind of access and that kind of insight into these people's lives 
Andy Oak is the first ladies' man. He'll be back tomorrow featuring a few for our last edition of this fun segment we've been doing all week here. We're, we're going to miss you after tomorrow, man. Well, hey, you know, there's a lot of first ladies and there's a lot of stories. I'll come back any and every time. You guys have been so fantastic to have me on this whole week. The Word Association was a first yesterday. That's so yeah. much fun. I'm putting all this stuff up on my Facebook page. Andrew Oak, and on my website, firstladiesman.com. And like you say, I'll be back tomorrow, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's been a really, really fun week with you guys. Thank you. Thanks. We'll talk to you tomorrow. You bet. 26 minutes after.